Our next guest joins us tonight to share a very precious and very personal story. Please welcome and give a warm and loving welcome to Canuck Place mother, Michaela Evanel. Michaela? Thank you, Sophie. The story I have for all of you tonight is hard to share and perhaps difficult for you to hear. However, it is a story of love, a timeless love. So thank you for listening and sharing in the celebration of my daughter, Florence. I am deeply grateful for our experience at Canuck Place, and I hope our story reveals the magnificence of this place as well as the compassion and courage that all the staff, volunteers, and families possess. Our daughter, Florence Marigold. Thank you for your patience. She was four months old when she was diagnosed with spinal muscular atrophy type 1. It's a neuromuscular disease, and type 1 is the most severe and most common. Babies with SMA face many physical challenges, including muscle weakness, trouble breathing, coughing, and swallowing. Parents may choose to intervene with breathing assistance or a feeding tube, but the mind is never affected. These children are bright and possess a strength and wisdom that is evident in their eyes. They speak volumes even when they say nothing at all. Although it is a terrible disease, I think every parent that has experienced SMA also feels deeply grateful for the gift our children give us. I really wish my little girl didn't die. But I also feel overwhelmed by her legacy and the bright flame of love that she left us. My life has been changed by her in the best possible way. I never imagined my firstborn, my daughter, would die before me. But she did. And she passed away in the most beautiful, loving environment. We will never see her grow up. But we were able to plan how we wanted to release her. We could never have done it on our own, because no parent can be caregiver and be present when the time of death draws near. The whole experience was intense and agonizing, but we were never alone. From the moment we realized we couldn't put Florence through another difficult hospital stay to the moment we decided we needed to move from our home to Canuck Place as she weakened, we were cared for. They cared not only for Florence on respite stays and at the end of her life, but they also cared for us. We were always cared for together as a family as a whole. They nourished our bodies with food and gave us a home away from home. And when we decided that we wanted Florence to pass away at home, they were completely supportive. And when we discovered we could no longer handle this process, they sent an ambulance for us and welcomed us with open arms. When we arrived, I remember asking the doctor a few hours in if my daughter was dying. I wasn't even sure. I was in such deep animal shock that I couldn't comprehend. I was like a child, a child that needed to mother her dying three-year-old and her seven-month-old breastfed baby, a child that needed her own mother but ultimately knew her mother couldn't understand the gravity of her sorrow and pain. As my whole world shifted, I simply could not stand up anymore. They held me with a steady gaze and deep understanding. They normalized a process that is terrifying and confusing. We gave Florence dignity, love, and a king-sized bed. We cuddled her on that bed. The sheets were a soft sage green. They weren't starchy white. She had a beautiful handmade patchwork blanket on her hips. There were play mats on the floor for our son, Theodore, and toys and marigolds filled the room. The windows were open, and we could hear the birds and the gentle hum of the neighbor's lawnmower. We played music all day long, and then eventually we turned off the monitors and machines. Our nurse gently reminded us that the saturation monitor could be turned off because many parents spent time staring at the numbers and worrying. In her last 24 hours, she did not have good numbers. 
So turning off the machines meant that we could simply be with our daughter, savoring every last moment with her. For once in our journey with her, we did not worry. For two years of Florence's life, we used artificial interventions to keep her alive. And as these machines and equipment was gently removed, she passed away peacefully. And I realized this was the natural way of things. Death isn't always gentle, but with the help of the team and my constant urging, she was kept comfortable. That was all I wanted. In her last moments, we were able to be fully present. We were mama and we were daddy. We were a piece of her, moving as one as she left this earth. My husband and I held each other as the air left her lungs. And the pangs of sorrow coursed through our bodies. As she transitioned from earth to heaven, I remember piercing the sky, the walls, the wind with my wails. For I knew it was a safe place. Even still, I went into the shower, knelt under the waterfall of hot water, I tried to muffle the sounds of my crying, but I'm sure the staff heard me, and it didn't bother me because Canuck Place is not surprised by death or grief. I never felt safe to be emotional in the open rooms of the PICU and the hospital. But finally, after all the years of worry and tension, I felt I had permission to release the torrent of sorrow that had been building up within me. And instead of going home after she passed, we were invited to stay overnight. I woke the next morning on Mother's Day knowing my little girl was downstairs, waiting for us to bid her farewell. My heart fluttered with anticipation. I could see her one more time. It was not the Mother's Day gift I had imagined, but it was a gift nonetheless. This is possibly the sweetest gift Canuck Place gave us. One more moment with her. There was no rush, only deep respect for our wishes and for our Florence. The room was cool and musky. The sweet smell of marigolds in bloom filled my nostrils. It smelled different than the night before, but I wasn't afraid. It was her smell. It was her on the bed. My little girl, wearing the same comfy t-shirt and sweatpants we had dressed her in after we'd bathed her. A nurse had changed the quilt, and I wept at the thought that she had honored our daughter and cared for her body throughout the night. Because of the nature of SMA, and because of the openness of communication and compassion that Canuck Place gave us, we became accustomed with what death might look like. We had staff members' wisdom to lean on, ears that listened, and hands that squeezed our own. And the beautiful thing is we still have these people in our lives. We still have a place where we can visit and receive bereavement counseling with other families. A place where we can sense our daughter's presence. We can introduce our two-year-old son to the magical world of Canuck Place and teach him about the sister he once kissed and touched and laughed with. When we visit, we feel at peace knowing Florence had the finest care, standing in the place where our daughter found rest and finally received a heavenly strength brings tremendous healing to us. Canuck Place is more than just a building. The walls seem to tremble with sacredness and strength. The family stories echo through the corridors light streams into the stained glass windows and the warmth of human love and dignity spill down the grand staircase. As a bereaved parent, I will never look at that building the same way. Most of the time we celebrate our daughter when we are there. We remember her at the festivals and the ceremonies and we teach our son to remember her too. But I also remember this place held my sorrow and it held us in at the most devastating and vulnerable time in our lives. When we left the day after she passed, we were given a box of food and reminded that we would see them soon. Our journey with our living, breathing Florence was over, but our grief journey was just beginning and they weren't letting us go. They hold us still. There is so much love in this room and we can all feel the goodness from it. And before I say my thank yous, I just wanna invite my husband up to the stage, Jason. He is one of my timeless loves as well. I want to thank you all on behalf of my family and families just like my own for your support. And thank you to Canuck Place.